Hey y'all, today we are adjusting the shims on my engine out of my 2005 Suzuki GS500. So let's get to it. I'm Zach and this is my odd garage. Alright, so we are first going to remove the cover. This particular engine has six cover bolts. They're loose because I've had this off a number of times since I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to get my valve shims in. So the one piece that's important with taking this cover off is there are O-rings under each of these bolts. So you wanna make sure to not lose them. Um, I like leaving them in and then I'll leave the bolt right on top. You'll see when I take the plate off. Sometimes they stick to the underside of here. So you just wanna make sure you know where they're at. So you don't have to get new ones. Alright, so. Now that we've got that off. I'm gonna put it down in cardboard. The other piece too with engines, um, you always want to keep, if you can, keep the same bolts with the same holes. Um, they were meant to go on that way and they thread in a lot better if you just keep them where they were at. There's also a gasket all the way around. Um, since we're just doing the valve shims, um, I can just leave this here. You can take it out, um, it doesn't really matter. So now we can see we have our two camshafts. This is our timing chain and the two sprockets here. What valves do is they let in the air and fuel mixture on the intake valve and they let out the exhaust on the exhaust valves. So since this is a two cylinder it has one of each of those valves on each cylinder. So on the front side here, we have our exhaust, because our muffler comes off the front, goes out the exhaust valves. And our intake, the mixture comes in through the carbs and is open or closed by the valves. Now, you don't actually see the valves because the valves are on the other side of this piece. What we see here is our cam, which pushes on, on motorcycles, usually a little bit older ones, they use what's called a shim and a bucket. So the shim is this round machined piece that sits inside of the bucket. As you can see here, 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 and here. Since I rebuilt the entire engine, all the clearances are off now, so Two of my shims are too big under the cam. One of them is okay, this one is still good. Um, so I have been waiting and waiting to get in my new shims to put in. Hopefully I measured right, I got some extras in case. Um, so we're gonna try that. Now, the other piece with the camshafts is on different size engines, it's gonna be different. Um, on this engine, when you rotate the engine around, you can get it in a spot where you have three out of four of the valves not being touched by the cam. So this one, this one, and this one, you can see the lobes are either at an angle. This one's clearly, you can see it's up. So this is a free shim to work on. This one here, you can see the lobe is pointed down, so it's 
pushing on the shim which is opening the valve currently. Um, so to get to this other one, which we won't need to do this time, but to get to it we got to rotate the engine so that these three will be down and this one will be up. So right now I have it so that the three are already up from the last time I worked on this. Um, but just to show you how it works and to free up some of them since they've been sitting, um, get some oil flowing through them. I have some of the assembly oil in there. You might be able to see there's some red. I'm going to take my socket and I'm going to rotate down here on the crank and you'll see everything will turn. You can see that oil came up right there. Ah, uh, and I still have my spark plugs in, so I'm feeling compression. I'm gonna take those out for the time being. So it can turn over a lot easier. I have them in so none of the crap in the air or something else will get in there. Take those out. That's why it was hard to rotate. Now, just going to rotate it a few times. You can see the cam pushing down and the valves are going up and down. Right there. Okay. We're going to go back to our first position here. Now that we're in place, um, on this engine they make this little tool. Basically what it does is it pushes down on the bucket so that the bucket goes down and you can pop the shim out easily. The easiest way to get them out is with a tiny screwdriver and a magnet. Put my magnet there. So the two that are out of spec are these two intake ones. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to lift one of them up and see if I can fit my first shim in there. And we'll check the clearance with a feeler gauge. So you might hear it pop. That means that the tool slipped a little bit. And so it didn't pop that time, but the tool slipped off the bucket and then the valve went back up because the valve has springs in there to facilitate the opening and closing. So I got my tool. Now I need my tiny screwdriver and then we'll use the magnet. So I, there is a small lip in the bucket to fit a screwdriver in to allow the shim to pop up. You can see it takes quite a bit to... I'm actually going to pull the gasket out just in case. I don't want to have to buy another gasket. The gasket only goes one way, so I don't have to worry about that either. Heard that snap, so it popped up. Now I can get my magnet in, fish it out. So you can see it's got a, it says 260 on it. That is the thickness of the shim. So the one we're going to try is a 
255. So I have the 255 here. This one kind of looks like it's been in an engine already, to be honest with you. Pretty dark. There's a little piece on there that I want to scrape off. So we got our shim. The one thing I'm going to do to check is measure it with a set of calipers. Just because I want to make sure it's within the spec. It's reading roughly 255, 254. You just want to check that because you, you want to know what you're working with. But we'll know soon enough if it works. Alright. So now I have this raised. Now I can slide it in. I'll get my screwdriver. You want to just make sure it's seated all the way around because if it's not and you lower it down won't be sitting in the right spot. You'll have some problems. So now I'm going to try to gently, there's the pop. So sometimes the tool is just, <laughs> it just slips off. It's got a very thin channel, so it might just slip off. It's okay though. So what you wanna do is rotate the engine a few more times just to get some oil flowing up again since we just put a new shim in there. So I usually do it about three times. Okay. We're back home. All right. Now I got my feeler gauges. Feeler gauges come in a bunch of sizes, as you can see. Um, this set goes all the way up to 0.6 millimeters and all the way down to 0.038 millimeters. And the specs on this engine, your clearance under the cam on top of the shim has to be between 0.03 and 0.08 millimeters so i'm shooting for 0.06 if we can get in the middle somewhere um, but basically all you do i usually start with the smallest previous to this i couldn't get any shims in here which means the clearance was very tight but it was close because i could still rotate the shim so i'm going to feel that and that goes in very nicely, the 0.038. Okay. So I have a feeling I might be able to go up some more to check. Okay, so my next size up is 0.051. Let's see? Okay. 0.051 is good. That means... We might be able to go up again and be in that sweet spot. My next size is 0 0.063 millimeters. Okay. Oh yeah. That is nice and smooth. Now. Now I'm comfortable with the 0 0.063, but I want to make sure that I can't go over spec, so I can't go over 0 0.08. So I have a 0 0.076, which we'll check if it, okay. So you can see that it's fighting me and it doesn't slide smoothly. So we are perfectly in spec on this one. Now I'm assuming that the specs are gonna be roughly the same. So I bought two of the same. So we're gonna try to put another 2.55 into this side. So I gotta rotate it to get the crevice up to the top. That's great news. Okay, there's my crevice at the top again. Yep, 
and I'm going to repeat the same thing. This is not sponsored by Ronnie Cycles, but I love your website. They got genuine Suzuki parts, um, and they always have, they always give me parts in a timely manner, so thank you, thank you. If you want, send me some parts. I can do some reviews. See, this one is much cleaner. You could tell it has not been used. Maybe the other one got returned or something. I don't know. So, real quick, check this again, but i um, pretty confident, yeah, 255, great, alright, so we'll slip you in there, that one sat right in, that was nice, let's double check, oh, it's in, okay, well, Tool popped. So again, rotate it. Some oil flowing. Now there's not oil in the engine, but there's assembly oil from when I put this back together. Okay, looking good. All right, let's cross our fingers, guys. Perfect, 0.03. We'll go to the 0.051. Very nice. 0.063, very nice. And we're gonna hope that this one does not go. Excellent. So everything is now in spec. These are exactly the same. The issue I have now is these two are not exactly the same, but they're in spec and the engine will run. The issue is with this one, I only need the shim so right now it's got a 270 shim in there, which means it's 2.7 millimeters thickness. I need probably like a 2.68 millimeter, but they don't sell them. The next size down they sell is a 2.65. Um, so I might get this one machined down and maybe this one machined down to match. Um, but that will probably be a future endeavor. Right now the engine will run. So we're good. So all I'm gonna do now, put the cover back on and button it up real nice. Um, and I will also be torquing the head bolts in to the top now that I have it all pieced together. Thank you guys for watching. Surprise, the engine's in. Tune in next time for a video maybe about the engine going in. Maybe we'll try to run it. Snowblower still has to come out the video will be next week. I gotta still coat the hit miss engine. Many many options. Lots of stuff to do. Tune in next time. Like subscribe. Drop a comment below. My Instagram Mickey's gonna put there. Have a good weekend. Take care.